So here's why I'm never having kids. It doesn't seem that fun. My mom had like a very Britney Spears moment. She grabbed me by the shoulders and she was like, don't have kids. Okay, first off, kids are expensive. Some people want kids, some people don't want kids. I think a lot of people have kids before they even think about it, from what I've seen, honestly. It's true, less people are having kids today, but I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. Hi guys, welcome back. We're here for another commentary video about another touchy subject, the child-free movement. As a 29 year old, I've got some good insights on this because it is more of a topic amongst my friends, people my age these days, whether or not they wanna have kids. Whether or not you have a child is a very personal decision, but the amount of people who are not having kids could have implications on our entire society. Today, I wanna to talk about why I think less people are deciding to have kids. There's quite an argument in terms of happiness and fulfillment that you can't be happy or fulfilled if you don't have kids, and also the implications that it can have on our economy and our society as a whole. All right, so let's, let's get into it with some stats. So first of all, it is a fact that less people are having kids. We can see from this graph from usafacts.org org the u.s fertility rate has dropped significantly since the baby boomer generation obviously the baby boomers was a time where there were more people born than normal and then it sharply declined we have seen in the last 10 years when you look at the graph there has been you know a slight decline but it's not as dramatic as from the baby boomer time to now. So yes, less people are having kids, but it's really not a whole lot different than how many people were having kids in the 80s and 90s. However, things are trending downwards still. And from what we're seeing Gen Z say about having kids, I, I don't think it's gonna recover. I don't think there's gonna be another baby boom. I mean, who knows? But the birth rate is probably gonna continue to just kind of go down. Today, the average woman has 1.6 kids, which which is below the replacement level of 2.1. So basically our population is slowly declining. The birth rate at this point isn't crazy low, but it still is below the replacement level. So in order for the population to stay the same, like replace itself, each couple needs to have 2.1 kids. This is not uniquely a US problem, actually. Japan already has an aging population. In South Korea, the birth rate is only 0.8 children per woman. And in Taiwan, the birth rate is 0.87. It's interesting though, when you look at the worldwide birth rate, it's actually at 2.3. So the total worldwide population is not declining, but it is declining the most amongst countries in Asia. And then also the US and Europe, basically all the developed countries, the birth rate is lower. The birth rate is the highest among countries in Africa. You can see the average woman is having anywhere from four to six kids. So there have been some surveys on people today on whether or not they plan to have kids. So this is from Pew Research Center. And this first study is on people who have never had kids on how likely they are to have them at all. And what we can find from this study is that about half of all people think that they will have kids. So 26% say they're very likely to have kids. 29% say they're somewhat likely. And then a little less than half say that they're not too likely or not likely at all. And these numbers for the not too likely and not likely at all are up a little bit since 2018. So more people are kind of, I don't know if I wanna have kids. We can see most people still want to have kids, but there's a good share of people who, who don't. And I think that's actually always been the case. It's just not as taboo to say it now. And what I found interesting is the reasoning. The majority of childless adults say the reason they don't wanna have kids is that they just don't want to. I mean, there's a lot of reasons, right? Economic, environmental, there are all these things that people feel like they need to come up with a valid reason. You know, the economy, the environment. But the truth is a lot of people just don't have that calling, but they don't really like kids enough to want to really dedicate a large chunk of their life to raising them. There are a lot of reasons, but I do think it's interesting that the main reason is that a lot of people just don't want to. So I think one of the biggest reasons people are not having kids now is really because it's okay not to. It, there's been a cultural shift really. Back in the day, I just don't even think people thought about the option of not having kids. The societal pressure was so much stronger back in even the 80s that it was almost not like you had a choice. From what I've heard, and even from talking to my own parents, I asked my mom like, did you guys 
think, you, you know, why did you have kids when you did? And, you know, she said they didn't, it wasn't really something you even thought about. People just did it. People got married a lot younger back then, sometimes right out of college or high school and jumped into having kids. So they didn't have a lot of time to explore adult life on their own and what it's like to be really as free as a lot of us experience now. This is a theory of mine, but I think there's probably a lot of people back then who also didn't really like love kids maybe, but it was just what you did, so they had them. Whereas now, people have a lot more time to themselves. People get married a lot later. As you can see from this graph, the median age of marriage is now closer to 30. So that means both men and women have a lot of time to travel, to be very free, to live their life, and also to build a career, to build an entire fulfilling life before even having kids. So that actually makes it so when you get to that age of around 30, when, you know, more people are having kids, you actually would have to give up a lot more things in order to do that. In general, there's a lot less stigma around it and the cultural shift of waiting longer to even get married allows people to just get a taste of what life can be like without having kids as an adult. Our parents' generation, which is oftentimes baby boomers, were having kids because nobody wasn't having kids. Like it's just what you were supposed to do. I don't think there's a lot of critical thinking that even went into decisions like marriage and like having kids. Another part of the cultural shift being a little bit later in life that people are having kids is it does affect fertility. So by the time people are 30 and they're getting married and like really seriously think about having kids, they don't have time to have as many, it's harder to. Some people, unfortunately, that want to have kids are not going to be able to. That is an unfortunate reality. Another big reason I hear people talking about a lot is economic reasons. It's really expensive to have kids and you know, people are having a hard time even just supporting themselves now. Millennials and Gen Z are living with their parents for longer. They have more student loans. It's harder to buy a house. Like I talked about in my last video, the economic inequality is now worse than ever. It's harder to be able to afford things that previous generations did. And I think a lot of people just don't feel comfortable financially having kids yet because they wanna have like a stable home first. They wanna have a house that they own and many people that want kids, sadly, can't afford it yet. Everything is more expensive, but especially child care. The cost of childcare has inflated significantly. This study found that since 1990, it's outpaced other expenses, even housing and groceries. So it's actually gone up over 200% in cost. I've seen TikToks of people talking about this, and I was also shocked at the price of childcare. They're not even in school, and you're already paying 25000 a head? Yeah. Find you a free summer camp. It does cost $25,000 a year to send your kid to daycare here in the United States of America, and it never ceases to amaze me how out of touch some people are with the lived experiences of parents here in the United States. Childcare is the number one rising cost for families here in our country. It is more expensive and going up at a faster rate than our mortgages, than groceries, than gas. It is the fastest rising cost for most families. And the average cost here in my state, I'm in Massachusetts, is $20,000, but depending on what county you're in, it goes up as high as $26,000. I've even looked into just getting a dog dog. A doggy daycare in LA is $60 for a day. So imagine an, an actual human child, which has a lot more need. It's going to be at least double, right? Side note, what a great business to get into. Obviously there's demand for childcare if they're able to charge that much. Um, and actually my parents did this back in the day when they just had recently had my brother, they opened a very small little daycare in their neighborhood. And so my mom would watch my brother and a few other kids and get paid for it. Kind of genius when you think about it because then she's not having to pay for childcare, but she's getting paid to watch her own kid and a few other kids. Of course, watching multiple kids, that's way more work than just one kid. I thought that was kind of genius of my parents for doing that. So shout out to them. A lot of people are still in a place where both parents need to work. So a lot of people, they're paying, what, 24,000 a year per child until they are able to go to public school. Another cost that comes into play is IVF. Since people are waiting longer to have kids more of them might have to go the IVF route I I know some people that have actually and from what I found online it's not cheap it's 15 to thirty thousand dollars per round 
You know, sometimes people need multiple rounds. So even before having a kid, the cost just to make that happen can be quite expensive. And again, that's like really sad because those are people who usually like really want to have kids. So economic reasons are a big one because I think a lot of people know that once you have a kid, it is significantly harder to get ahead in your career, to have a side hustle, start a new business. It's not impossible, but it is harder. You have less time to do it. It is risky to start a new business and it's a lot easier to do so when you only need to provide for yourself. When you have to think about kids, it's a lot more pressure. I don't blame people at all for wanting to wait to have kids or not having them at all for economic reasons because truthfully, it's it's harder if you don't have the money for it. You, the quality of life that you and your potential kid would have, whether you have money or not, is very different. One thing people don't talk about is their kid would be born into worse economic inequality as well. For example, the boomer generation, easier to buy a house, Gen X, a little harder, millennials, a little harder, Gen Z, a little harder. It it just continues to get harder and harder for the next generation to get ahead unless they have generational wealth. I do think there's an argument where some people are going, you know, it's going to be really hard for my kid to be able to buy a house. If it's hard for me, it's going to be harder for them. And the cost of everything continuing to go up, it, it, it's not looking good for them. And so I think a lot of people just go, you know what, maybe I'll opt out. Economic reasons, they're definitely valid. They're very real. I think another reason we're seeing less people have kids is because women in general just have more options. Birth control wasn't even invented until the 60s. That alone was the beginning of deciding whether or not you could have a kid. But still, women couldn't have a bank account without their husband's permission until 1974. And just over time, we've seen women make more money, more have college degrees, more of them even than men do. There actually is kind of an epidemic of women that just can't find a partner that's worthy of having kids with. We women have higher standards as we should. And because of that, we're realizing that the majority of men that exist, we should not have children with. In my 20s, I would have said absolutely must have kids. I want them. At 30, I started questioning if that was just something that society's told me that I've wanted. I, there's not a lot of men I meet that I think they'd be great fathers. And so I, I kind of don't have that instinct to like procreate with them because I'm like, oh, I don't know if this would be an equal parenting relationship. They are not going to settle for some man that makes their life harder. Women have more power and money than they did before. So oftentimes they want a partner that will actually help, but it's not always easy to find that. So I think it's harder for a lot of women to just find someone that is on their level I've seen some older men talk about this men crisis where like Gen Z men are not even asking girls on dates as much. Another big reason no one talks about is the fact that we see the reality of motherhood now. There was so much stuff I had no idea about until TikTok. The girl with the list, you guys. I feel like back in the early 2000s, it was just the romanticization of motherhood, of like families. We only saw like the sugar-coated version in ads, in movies, even on Facebook, people just posting their family photos. But now you go on TikTok, Oh no, people are peeling back the curtain and it's a lot. A lot of you guys know of the TikTok account, The Girl with the List, basically a list of hundreds of reasons to remain child free. It ranges from everything from scary medical things that can happen in pregnancy and childbirth itself to things that your kids can actually do. It's all kinds of reasons, everything you can think of. Here's one of them. It's also opened my eyes to the fact that a lot of moms are very lonely. Now all my friends Who am I anymore? I can't remember the last time somebody used my name and not mom. I love being mom most of the time. I love these kids all of the time, but I've forgotten what it means to have fun. I've forgotten what it feels like to have energy at the end of the day or even the beginning of it. What happened to my hopes and dreams and fears and uniqueness? Sometimes all that's left are my triggers. But a lot of them, you know, they're stuck at home with a kid that can't really talk. That does sound pretty lonely, actually. From what I've seen on TikTok, it seems very chaotic. It seems very overwhelming. It seems like you have to really, really want that in order for it to be worth it because it's not easy. I give a lot of props to all the parents out there because it seems hard. I don't want this video to come off like you shouldn't have kids because I really do feel like some people are meant to. Like some people are so good at it and like, Shout out to them. 
I'm all for that. I think that's great if you want to have kids. Um, but if you don't want to have kids, let's not pressure people into it. TikTok has really opened my eyes to a lot of the negatives of parenting that, you know, a lot of people I think didn't even realize before. There's also the regretful parents Reddit phenomenon. I've always had this theory that there probably are a lot of people that regret having kids, but it's too shameful to admit it. So they just don't tell anyone. That's proven to be kind of true because now that we have anonymous online forums, people are like bursting at the seams to tell someone. Reddit has this forum of parents who have regretted it and it's it's quite sad, honestly. There's over a hundred thousand people a part of it. I've read through a number of them. Many of them are situations that seem very difficult. You know, partner left them, didn't really want to have a kid to begin with, but they were pressured into it, so they regret it. It's honestly reasons that make sense. Some every now and then where people thought they were gonna like being a parent, but they actually don't. Like this one, for example, is it just me? I'm 39, female, a first time mom to a five month old who is truly wonderful, smart and loving. My husband who is much older than me has taken to fatherhood like a duck to water. However, I am not. The amount of sacrifices I've had to make as a mostly stay at home mom has been ridiculous. I used to be freer, happier businesswoman, and now I'm just existing day to day as a shell of a human person. Okay, so that is pretty sad. I'm just making the point that more people now are seeing the reality of how hard it really is to raise kids. Truly, people are just thinking it through more whether or not they want to put themselves through that. Just popping in here while I'm editing to say that while there are definitely regretful parents out there that we can see now, I do think this is the minority of people. This is just the first time we're seeing people admit to it. So it's kind of crazy to see it. But if you look, there are a ton of people who are happy with their decision to have kids. So I don't think it's that there are more regretful parents than there are non-regretful parents. It's just that before it was way too taboo to say anything about it. So now now, for the first time, we're just seeing some people speak up about it. I don't want to make it sound like, you know, everyone's going to regret having kids or anything like that. I think truly most people do not. But I do think it's interesting now that we do see that there are some people that have found that it wasn't the right choice for them. And it is unfortunate. And I think a lot of them are the ones that felt pressured into doing it for societal reasons. A lot of the stigma of not having kids falls onto women. But I have seen more men talking about it now too, which I think is interesting. Um, I love what Seth Rogen has to say about being child free. Just check it out. You referenced earlier you don't have any kids. I do not. That has helped me succeed as well. <laughs> Definitely. Really? Oh, yeah. Uh, there's a whole huge thing I'm not doing, which is raising children. <laughs> <laughs> would it, people, obviously, someone would be listening, but yeah, but it would make you happier. You know, someone might say that. I'm trying to rebuttal. I don't think it would. I've been around, obviously, a lot of children. I'm not, I'm not ignorant to what it's like to, I've, I've seen everyone I know has kids. I, I see, I'm a, you know, I'm 40 again, you know, like it's not, I, I know, you know, I, some people want kids. Some people don't want kids. I think a lot of people have kids before they even think about it. From what I've seen, honestly, you just are told, you go through life, you get married, you have kids. It's what happens. And me and my wife were just, neither of us were like that, you know? And honestly, the older we get the more happy and reaffirmed we are with our choice to not have kids. Okay, <laughs> looking to the future years, um, you've been open about not wanting kids. So is this yes. still a thing? Okay, I, 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 still do know, I still don't want kids, yeah. <laughs> uh, why, why? Like you just never saw yourself as now, you just like your time. It doesn't seem that fun. I can see how it <laughs> seems that way. <laughs> People describe having kids, yeah, as like brief glimmering moments of beauty amongst a sea of pain. It, it kind of, whereas not having kids is just, it's just lovely all the time. I think it's great to see people that are child free in midlife and don't regret it. You are though, like me, child free by choice yes you have decided that that is not the life for you is it because you come from a family of five is it maybe i mean i just don't ever i knew right away that i just i just felt childhood was so insulting you know i didn't feel like a child i didn't yeah. relate to being a child i went to disney world and i was like this is insulting and i and i feel very i, I feel very vehement about you know, all women really taking it under, into yeah. consideration. You know, you don't have to do that. You don't have to get yeah. married. You don't have to have a baby. But there are a lot of people now who are 
older and didn't have kids and are talking about it. And a lot of them honestly seem pretty happy with that decision. So here are some people that are a bit older in their life who have spoken about this. One being Oprah. She said, I have not had one regret about that. Betty White. I didn't realize this until I started Googling it. She actually never had kids and she said she did not regret it. Miley Cyrus has cited environmental reasons for why she doesn't want to have a kid in an interview. And I think a lot of people relate to this one. On the flip side, there are definitely cases of people who got older and regretted never having kids. But a study in Australia showed that's a minority of child-free people. In this study, only a quarter of child-free women regretted the decision. I think in general, though, there's not that many studies on this kind of thing. And the truth is, some people are going to regret it and some people aren't. But a lot of the studies say that people don't regret it. It's human nature. There's just always going to be people who feel like that instinct to have kids. But I also think it's it's pretty normal for people to not have that as well. It was just stigmatized a lot before and now it's a little more accepted. Not completely, but a little bit more. But people are not happy about this decline in birth rate and it's really because it's not great for how our economic system is set up. So let's talk about the implications that this will have on the economy. A lot of people say there won't be enough workers, young workers to support the workforce needed and a lot of people point out the irony of this because capitalism needs more people to survive. But at the same time, it's making it harder and harder for people to afford to have kids in the first place. So the system is basically killing itself. Another big one is social security. The way that social security is set up is that the younger generation pays for the older generation that is currently withdrawing social security. The misconception about social security, people often think that the money they're paying in through payroll taxes it every month is their personal fund they're going to draw from in retirement. But in reality, the money that you're paying in payroll taxes every month is paying for current retirees uh, benefits. So that's fine if you have enough workers supporting retirees. So, so let's say there's 100 million people withdrawing social security, but only 20 million that are now working and paying into that. The math isn't mathing. Social security really is set up for a population that can replace itself. It is an issue. It is something that I am not really banking on. I remember even when I was in middle school, having this science teacher who was kind of laughing about it. He was like, ha ha ha, my generation is going to be the last to get social security. You guys are so screwed. And at that time, we didn't even have a population decline issue. It's just the baby boomers. Like there's so many of them. The good news though, is if you are child free, you're likely saving so much money that you don't have to spend on kids that you can set aside that for your own retirement and maybe not have to rely on social security. I do think social security is something that we might not be able to bank on, you know, especially if the population is declining. This is why we see people like Elon Musk really speak out about it and being like, like we need to have more kids. And while Elon might be controversial, I know a lot of you guys do not like him, but he is putting his money where his mouth is at least and making changes at his companies to support people having families, which is a good thing. It's true. It's important for our society to continue for some people to have kids. But the only reason that it's important to like replace the amount of people or have the population grow significantly is for capitalism. The economy grows when there's more people buying into it. We can even see with Japan, now that they have more of an aging population, less of a workforce, the population's declining in general, it has had an impact on their economy. You can see their GDP has stayed pretty much the same. It hasn't grown in the way that the U.S. has. And I've seen some people say this is because the older population doesn't spend as much money. It's younger people who are more of consumers. An older population presents a challenge for its economy. They already have houses. They no need to change their cars. They married already. So the expenditures and the expenses on consumption is much lower and no need to travel. For one, it would need to increase its birth rate or bring in foreigners to work. If you don't have enough working population, you don't have enough taxpayers to finance the government budget, to pay for the government budget, and then government find problem for paying for the social security, pension, and so on. Welcome more foreigners and uh, to encourage them to stay much longer and enjoy their culture, food. Japan is kind of a foreshadowing for what can happen everywhere else. And I'm not gonna lie, you guys, 
it is kind of concerning. It's quite an eerie feeling to walk through these streets because you don't see anybody, you don't hear any cars, you don't see anything, and most of the places have just been closed. Way more people are dying in this country than being born. A country that is closing up kindergartens and housing cares are increasing. And if nothing changes, Japan could eventually just not exist. If you kind of extrapolate on the numbers, it, it's going to happen. When you actually look at these numbers, you see why they say that Japan could disappear. Just look at this chart which shows Japan's population projected decline. The country will go from being the 11th most populous country in the world to one day there will be less people in Japan than the state of New Jersey. So this is a reason that a lot of people get upset or worried about it is because, you know, it probably will have some economic consequences. But I think pressuring people to have kids when it's it's too expensive to largely doesn't really make sense either. But I think there is something kind of dystopian telling people like you need to have kids because we need more taxpayers. If anything, a slower birth rate for the next decade might just be the thing that resets the housing market. If there's less demand than supply, then housing prices should go down and maybe more people will want to have kids again. And also people have argued that just because the birth rate is lower right now does not mean that it always will be. If you look at this chart in the early 1900s, there was a decline then too, but then there was the baby boomer generation. We might just be in a period of decline, but that doesn't mean that it can't go up again. So while economically the child-free movement does pose some issues, we can't deny that. If there is a mostly aging population and not much of a workforce, that would cause problems with the government budget, with the amount of people that can care for that older population. But I do think that technology could compensate for a lot of it. AI is getting better so fast. I think that a lot of jobs won't be necessary anymore. It'll be mostly essential ones. Really, the in-person jobs will still probably need doctors firefighters, stuff like that. But the self-driving cars are so good. I don't think we'll need Uber drivers. I actually think we probably won't need as many people working because less jobs will even be necessary. If you think about the early 1900s when people were having like eight kids, part of the reason for that was they needed people to work on the farm. You know, if you only had say four kids, who was gonna tend to the farm? But technology took care of that problem. Another point I've seen people make to counteract the economic issues is having a better legal immigration system. I mean, immigration could be a whole video in itself. We're not gonna get fully into it. But the fact of the matter is the birth rate is really only low in certain countries. The global birth rate is still above the replacement level. So in some of these other countries that are already struggling with an elderly population, they are encouraging immigration so that they have some younger people to work. But it is up to each country to have a system of legal immigration that is efficient and really works. I feel like here in the US, we don't really have that, but if it came down to it, they probably would. So while economically the child-free movement does pose some issues, environmentally, I think it's actually a good thing. Humans, we really are an invasive species. Like we create so much waste. I saw a stat that on average in our lifetime, we each create 90,000 pounds of garbage. That's insane. That's not even to mention how much we each consume in fossil fuels. Even if you try your hardest to be environmentally friendly, like you still are consuming a lot of fossil fuels. Like I have an electric car, but the reality is a lot of the time I go to a supercharger, that electricity is still generated by coal. So we are finding more environmentally friendly ways to generate energy, but we're still not totally there yet. So each of us is generating a lot of waste and consuming a lot of energy in the form of fossil fuels. I think if the population just cut in half and then stayed in the replacement level after that, that probably would be good for the planet. The only issue is when it cuts in half generation after generation after generation, because that would exponentially decline to zero, like pretty quick actually. I think it is possible that this decline trend isn't gonna stay forever. It could just be for a little while and then we level out to a more balanced area. I mean, that is kind of what happened in the early 1900s. It was going down then too as well, but that trend didn't last. Very shortly after was the baby boomer generation. So I think a decline for a little bit honestly isn't that bad of a thing. So I think there are benefits to a smaller population for sure. It's just, we have to figure out the economic piece of it. So what are some good solutions to the declining birth rate? I think it would be really supporting people that want to have kids and making it easier for them to do so. In Taiwan, 
on, they're already doing this in the form of subsidizing the cost of IVF. People are having kids later, and I think that's a trend that's here to stay. Our biology hasn't really caught up with it, but science has. And if it's too expensive for people, then they're probably not going to have kids. I think subsidizing IVF for people that want it is probably a good move if we want to encourage people to still have kids, and especially people that want to have kids to have kids. Although that ruling in Alabama is not really making that easy. But that's only Alabama. So let's hope it doesn't go anywhere else. And then I think also the cost of childcare needs to come down. The reality is in most situations, both parents need to be working to afford the life in America now. And I just was shocked to learn that childcare costs have risen so much. I don't know what the answer is. I don't know if the government would do a good job subsidizing childcare, maybe some kind of credits for it or more tax credits. I'm not really sure. I think in general, there probably just needs to be more support for the people that actually want to have kids to make it possible for them to do so and a lot of that is going to come down to supporting them financially and then just leaving the people who want to be child free alone because in reality it is the minority still yes more people are talking about it so we have this bias like it's becoming a big thing but in reality like go on facebook most people still want to have kids most people are still having kids like when i talk to my friends i know that most of them want to but there are some of us that just don't really want to and have never really wanted to and the interesting thing is a lot of the people who i talk to who are child free and want to continue to be child free they've known it since a young age like some people just know that that is not their calling it is not for them our society just used to push it on everyone and now it's okay for people to be like actually I don't want to do that I actually think it's a good thing for people to just to feel okay doing what feels right to them because truthfully I feel like people that don't want to be parents are probably not going to make the best parents Let's talk about fulfillment because this is a big thing that people ponder when they think of whether they want to have kids or not. There's this big idea that you haven't fully lived if you haven't had kids, but there's also an argument that children are not there to fulfill you. Having kids for your own fulfillment is argued to be a selfish reason because there's a lot of pain in the world. It's not like you're bringing in a child to have all good experiences. Like the human experience is, is great, but it's also difficult. Children alone are not going to fulfill someone. I know I don't have kids, but I'm thinking of like my own parents and like older uh, generations that I know, you know, they may have children, but those kids leave and have their own life. And if you're banking on your kids to fulfill you, what are you gonna do when they move out? I think largely like having kids keeps people really busy and distracts them from finding fulfillment in other ways that ultimately they're gonna need to figure out later on. And this is gonna be in personal relationships, friendships, community, giving back, passions, having a career you love. There are all these things and just having kids is not going to fulfill you necessarily. And I do think it depends on whether you want them or not. If you really want kids, Kids, it's probably going to be a more fulfilling experience than if you don't really want kids and you're just doing it because of societal pressures. I think that fulfillment is actually a lot more subjective than what we've been led to believe. People act like there's this one path to fulfillment, but I personally think that it's very different for everyone. For some people, that's going to be having a family. They're going to find a lot of fulfillment in that. And for some people, they're not going to find fulfillment in that. They might have kids, but they find more fulfillment in their career and other passions and relationships. I think it's dependent on each person. So after all this, is the child-free movement a good thing? I actually think the child-free movement is a good thing because it just gets rid of some of the stigma, the pressure for people that never wanted to have kids anyway. I actually, my theory, my own personal theory, I don't think it means that more people don't want to have kids than before. I think it's the same amount. It's just the people who never wanted to feel free to not do that, which I think is good. In conclusion, it needs to be more affordable for people that want to have kids to do so. Because it is true that for a society, for our economy, it's important for some people to have kids. If, if no one had them, like that would be an issue, let's be real. But a lot of people are finding that the economic environment, the physical environment is not conducive for having kids. And that's a reason they're not doing it. <sighs> okay, so that's the video. That's my take on the child-free movement. Let me know what you guys think, especially if you have kids kids or if you are child free what has your experience been like i would love to know everything why you chose to have kids why you chose to be child free what it's been like please comment down below so we can have a discussion and i'll see you guys in my next video bye